Good evening, Mary News Media TV family. Welcome back to the channel for another news update for April 1, 2024. And in the news of this evening, teens suspected of drowning in Alligator Pond on Easter Monday. A teenager is suspected to have drowned in Alligator Pond, Manchester, on Easter Monday after his body was retrieved from a beach. Police identified the deceased as Nathaniel Thompson, 17, a student of Alphonse Davis High in Spalding. A police report said about 10.30 a.m., Thompson went to an area known as a Sea Reef with her relatives and got into difficulty. His body was retrieved from the water and later removed to the morgue. The area known as a river has been the scene of numerous drownings over the years. Last August, two people drowned at the location. A local community hero who saved the people from drowning at the same location also drowned upstream the river in Alligator Pond a week after rescuing several people. This latest incident of drowning in Manchester follows another occurrence last Thursday in Ingleside, Mandeville in the parish where a 16-year-old is suspected to have drowned in a swimming pool. One dead, two hospitalized in Clarendon Collision A man is dead and the two people have been hospitalized following a collision on the Savannah Cross Main Road in Clarendon on Sunday night. The deceased has been identified as Alton Hales, 45, of a St. John's Road address in Spanish Town, St. Catherine. The police say the accident happened about 7.10 p.m. on the Bustamante Highway in the vicinity of the Savannah Cross intersection in Clarendon. Reports are that the driver of the Toyota Pro Box was driving from Savannah Cross and upon reaching the intersection, he collided with a Honda SUV, which was coming from Mineral Heights. Upon impact, the Pro Box overturned, killing the driver. A female who was in the vehicle is being treated at hospital along with the driver of the Honda SUV. The area where the accident happened is a noted crash hotspot. Hanover man accused of pointing gun at a neighbor charged. A man has been charged after he allegedly pointed a gun at his neighbor as he took out the garbage on Friday in Kingsville District, Hanover. Charged with assault at a common law and the possession of a prohibited weapon is 24-year-old Tevin Cooper, otherwise called Tev, of Ginger Hill, Kingsville in the parish. Reports are that about 9.30 a.m., a man was at home disposing of garbage when Cooper, who lives in the same yard, approached him and allegedly pointed a gun at him. A report was made to the police and an investigation was launched. Cooper was subsequently arrested and charged. His court date has not been finalized. Former Police Federation Chairman Claims Victimization Corporal Rohan James, former chairman of the Jamaica Police Federation, is claiming that he has been victimized in the move by the Central Executive Committee to replace him as head of the organization. It was announced on March 19 that Inspector Blanche Kotner had been appointed the new chairman of the Police Federation. A new general secretary was also selected. But in a letter addressed to rank and file members of the Jamaica Constabulary Force on Monday, Corporal James said, he felt it imperative to break his silence on the recent developments. He says his leadership of the Police Federation was never used for personal gains. Corporal James has accused the current Central Executive Committee of betraying and sacrificing him as a result of his uncompromising stance regarding the well-being of the rank and file membership. He is claiming that there was collusion with the police high command to have him replaced at the Central Committee even as his case against the high commander progresses through the court. Corporal James contends that the decision to replace him came about because of the contempt proceedings that he filed in the Supreme Court on January 17 this year in relation to the failure of the authorized persons to implement orders of the court for an overtime system. He has reiterated that the matter was placed before the court with the knowledge and the consent of the full Central Executive Committee arising from the numerous complaints from the general membership and the evidence gathered. Corporal James is charging that the Central Executive Committee has placed this matter on hold to ensure that he is removed from the committee, after which the case will be withdrawn from the court. He has taken issue with the action of the committee and has pledged to take all appropriate steps to safeguard the process and to file appropriate actions where necessary. Corporal James remains off the job as he awaits the outcome of the appeal of the stay of interdiction 
that was granted to him by Supreme Court Judge Tara Carr. He was interdicted last year after he criticized the police high command for failing to pay overtime money due to members of the force. Missed information, customs agency responded to concerns about a contact clearance process. Jamaica Customs Agency says in the coming weeks it will be addressing misinformation in the public domain regarding the contact clearance process, which is the subject of a legal challenge. The agency says it will continue to share information regarding how the process works, how to access it, and its benefits. Jamaica Customs says as a result of the interim court order obtained in the Supreme Court by the Customs Brokers and the Freight Forwarders Association of Jamaica, the Physical Inspection Reform Initiative, contactless clearance process will remain optional after tomorrow, April 2. The Supreme Court order has directed that no change be made to the current regime pending the determination of certain matters that have been placed before it. The JCA says it will continue to review the program and engage with its stakeholders. It says that this will ensure that it is implemented in a manner that safeguards the rights of importers, remains consistent with international best practice, and upholds the agency's mandate with respect to trade facilitation and border protection. Last week, Thursday, the Custom Brokers and the Freight Forwarders Association of Jamaica was successful in blocking the April 2 implementation of the initiative. According to court documents, the association is adamant that the contactless system threatens to make their role and functions irrelevant by conducting the physical and intrusive inspections of containers of goods without them or the importers they represent being present. Cops probe break-in at a popular St. Andrew jewelry store. Police have launched a probe after a popular jewelry store in the tourist resort town of Utria St. Anne was broken into and robbed on Monday morning. The store, Gem Palace on Main Street, Utrius, was reportedly broken into between 3.20 a.m. and 3.40 a.m. An undetermined assortment of jewelry was stolen, the police said. Reports reaching the news indicated that around 3.48 a.m., police received information about a break-in and the team was immediately dispatched to the scene. On their arrival at the scene, police observed that the lower section of the entrance grill was cut open and the glass door shattered. The operators of the store were contacted. They later arrived and confirmed that the store was broken into. The operators were, at the time, unable to put a value on the stolen items. Initial police investigations have uncovered that a man dressed in a black hooded jacket was seen coming from the jewelry store and heading up Main Street. Woman killed in Fern Gully crash identified, six remain hospitalized. The police have identified the woman who was killed in Sunday's crash in Fern Gully, St. Anne. She is 49-year-old Susie Thomas, a housekeeper of Wildman Street in Kingston. A total of 23 persons were injured in the bus crash. The police say six of them remain in hospital in serious condition. Reports from the Otorius police are that about 11.20 a.m., Thomas was among passengers in a Nissan Caravan motorbus heading towards St. Mary when on reaching a section of the roadway, the right front tire blew out. As a result, the driver lost the control of the motorbus, which collided with a stone wall and overturned. Several individuals sustained injuries, including 16 children and 7 adults. Prompt a response from the police, fire brigade and a fellow motorist facilitated the transportation of the injured persons to hospital, where Thomas was pronounced dead. Investigations are ongoing. Badness gone down in Claremont, St. Anne The body of a man was found with multiple gunshot wounds in Claremont, St. Anne today. He has been identified as 56-year-old Alcan Rose, otherwise called the Bugs and the Badness. The police report that residents reported hearing explosions around 10.30 on Sunday night near the Fesco service station. This morning around 7.30, residents discovered the lifeless body of the deceased and contacted the Claremont police. When the police arrived, Rose was found on his back with what appeared to be multiple gunshot wounds to the head and the chest. The scene was processed and the body was taken to the St. Anne's Bay Regional Hospital where death was confirmed. Investigations are ongoing. Four charged after gun find at a popular Montego Bay beach. 
Four people, including a teen, were arrested and charged after an illegal weapon was reportedly found in their possession at the Akosol Walter Fletcher Beach in Montego Bay, St. James, on Monday morning. They have been charged with the possession of a prohibited weapon and ammunition. No court date was given for the accused. They are Kenroy Kenil Gill, 26, delivery man, Shaquille Shakur Williams, 28, Tian Tom Blake, 19, all from Granville, St. James, and the Shan Lee Bennett, a supervisor from Norwood in the parish. Reports are that around 12.20 a.m., police were on duty at Akosol Walter Fletcher Beach in Montego Bay when they observed a 2012 white Nissan AD wagon motor car entering the compound. Williams, Gill, and Bennett were seated in the vehicle while Blake stood on the outside, leaning inside and talking with them, police said. The police were walking towards the motor car to have the driver remove the vehicle from blocking the entrance when they observed all four accused shuffling inside. This aroused the suspicion of the police. The police accosted the four accused and requested a search of the motor car. During the search, one black canic elite pistol loaded with a magazine containing 10 9mm cartridges was found under the rear seat, the police said. The accused were arrested and escorted to the Montego Bay police station with a firearm and ammunition. The motor car was placed on a wrecker and towed to the station. The four accused were subsequently charged.